tubercle. Tubercle? Tubercle. Do they do anything? Whales. Whales have them. Why not planes? Well, I added some tubercles to a plane. Nice, smoothly lofted tubercles. Look at those babies. Look how smooth they are. When connecting the two back pieces of the fuselage, um, since it's longer, I made this support piece that you just slide in here into the piece and it's printed flat so it has strength in a different uh, dimension. And you just slide it in between here when you glue these two pieces together. It also helps align the pieces so it just slides in there. You might have to use a, a razor to s clear out the little notch there but you should be able to sl work, your, work it in there. The EDF slides in. I had it removable, but since it's sitting right here on the tail boom, if I had it removable, it becomes, it kind of weakens the tail boom. So uh, I have it going here. So you're gonna have to put the wires in right here and then slide them back out. Shouldn't be too difficult if you get the angle right. Cause there's a curve there that helps push them back. Also, it's really helpful to have some tweezers to grab things. That way you don't have to reach around or uh, try so hard when you do stuff like that. All right, so there's two little notches on the X-Fly 40 millimeter on all the X-Flies. And you just slide it in. It's There's notches on the side of the X-Fly 40 millimeter and you just slide it in. It's at an angle like that and it goes in and just slowly push it in and it will go back a few millimeters, gently. Not too hard so you don't squeeze the part, and then you'll have plenty of wire there. And when you connect the ESC, you're gonna wanna slide it out the back and connect them before you glue. That will just make it a lot easier because it's kinda, you can't really fit your fingers in that back part too easily, so. I would connect them and then tape them so they don't come undone. All right, so I have them connected like, and then, it goes through the back like there, and then you can uh, glue your piece together. You're gonna wanna put a extension through here and then um, for the elevator servo. And it should just slide, it's the hole's big enough that you can slide it through. If not, you can use a carbon rod or tweezers to push it through. I like to do it before I glue everything. Might as well make it easier. You can still do it once you glue everything, but just a little bit more difficult. Then you can reach around and get it out there. And then if you want, you can tape this so it doesn't pull out while you're moving things around. Use some masking tape to tape it down if you want. So lots of the parts, well, all the parts when I'm when I list the files will have these little holes. You can slide in some filament and then cut it and then slide in the filament, cut it, and then you can connect the parts like this. That allows you to line the parts up without almost any extra effort. And also there's alignment holes here. And also if you'd like on the elevator horizontal stabilizer, you can add a carbon rod. Not necessary, but it helps increase durability and also the strength of it. Carbon rods, um, like when you hit the ground and say you're landing and you hit the ground it it might keep the part from breaking so it's not only about just flying so i slid the carbon rod through the fuselage and into both the wings i like to put the servos in before i glue anything just to make sure everything and it's always a good idea to check them to make sure they're working and get the servos in there and then route it through right there and it's curved so it should if you push it in just right, it should slide into the fuselage nice. It won't, it shouldn't get stuck on anything. And real quick, it's, you're gonna need extensions on your servos depending on which brand you buy. I think Emacs have a longer one and the DS Power 4.3 gram have a shorter, but you're probably gonna need a, at least a six inch extension. All right, so the ailerons, you're gonna have these TPU hinges and they're nice and curved so they're easy to fit in there. I would test fit everything 
I printed the ailerons out of PLA so they it's easier to slide them in, but depending on your lightweight PLA settings, it might be a little more difficult, but so I recommend sliding them into the wing, the lightweight PLA part. It's a little stiffer. Just barely push it in there. All the all the TBU parts, hinges, and then test fit everything. Make sure to test fit everything and then put a drop of glue on each side. Just a little drop of glue and then slide on the slide on the L ailerons like that. Make sure to as they're drying, make sure to wiggle them so that they don't get stuck in that place. So just make sure it can move. And then they should align at the trailing edge for both of them. All right, so for the magnets, I have eight by three millimeter magnets. And so what you do is you glue them in one piece and then you stack an extra one on top. And then you know which direction you can glue it in. So you put glue on the bottom of that like this. You just put glue in there and you grab it. You need to make sure you put it in the right orientation. For um, the receiver, I like to use this Hobby Eagle A3 Mini, but you could use any like, gyro type of thing. You don't have to use a gyro, but I think it's pretty useful because you can put an angle mode when you launch it and it keeps it level. So it's a lot easier, even though this plane is obviously pretty stable still kind of nice to have and you can adjust it on your remote with this one and you can program it and I have a little programming card I have a little I have a little programming card thing you can connect it with USB and so if you set in your model you can well you, before you fly it you can adjust everything on here so it's pretty handy instead of hooking up to a computer and it's not that expensive for this thing and I really like it. Here are the 4.3 gram servos glued into the wing and they are attached with the 1.2 millimeter or 1.3 millimeter push rod. The same with the tail. The servo is hot glued into the tail fin and then I put a piece of tape over it before I paint it. And inside the canopy, canopy is attached by magnets. We have some Velcro, and then the gyro right there, and then the ESC. And you can see the you're going to need a long servo lead to come from the tail, but then the servos for the aileron come out the top right there. So to balance the plane, you're going to need to balance it on the CG marks right here. They're 60, they are 60 millimeters behind the leading edge of the wing. And there's two little circles that are embossed into the wing on either side. So we got the plane all ready to go, balanced. And here's the battery. This is a 1500 milliamp 4S, the Hobby Eagle Gyro with the S-Bus. I have an ELRS receiver. Um, and then just a basic 40 amp brushless ESC. The throws I have set up are quite large. And then I have some Expo on there also. I have, uh, let's check. I have 24% Expo on the ailerons, and I think 15 on the elevator, and then 85% throw on the aileron and 65% throw on the elevator. And I'm gonna launch it in, I'm gonna launch it in the auto level mode. So when I throw it, it will level itself. So when I go down, it wants to go up. When I go up, it wants to go down, and yeah. Don't really need it, but it's just nice to have.
nice and slow. On the glide, it needs some up elevator to glide level or to glide. Okay, let's come in for a landing. So earlier when I wasn't recording, I was flying around and I landed and then I pressed the power and I was able to take off from the grass. So here I am recording it this time and trying and of course this doesn't work at first because that's how things go. And uh, one push and two push and nothing happened. But then the third push, it was able to get airborne. <sighs> Oh, <laughs> what? Okay, we're going to come in for a quick landing. I have it on low throttle. So smooth and slow. So good. So as you can see, the landing here was a little bit smoother than the last one. The last one I applied power right before the ground and caused it to like kind of uh, wiggle around. This one I kept the power about like the smallest the throttle setting would go. And it lands so smooth like that. Really, really smooth. And here is another flight before I painted everything and right after I had built it. Really nice sunset on this flight too, so. Here are some of the other planes I designed. You can find them on Colts. They're, these are all the EDF designs I've made. Some are fast, some are slow. Check them out. Zephyr Labs. <laughs>